Hi everyone, I'm Rocio Gomez Pastor and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Neuroscience in the University of Minnesota. And I'm presenting this poster, which is a very um, collaborative effort for, many, uh, for a lot of different faculty in, in the Department of Neuroscience in which we're proposing Huntington's disease as a new synoclinopathy. For those of you that are not familiar with HD or synoclinopathy, Huntington's is a neurodegenerative disease. It consists in protein misfolding and aggregation due to a polyglutamine expansion in a protein called Huntington. On the other side, alpha-synuclein, which is a cytoplasmic protein, um, plays a very important role in Parkinson's and also in Alzheimer's disease. And when it's mutated and it aggregates, also causes synoclinopathy. So until now, there were very little information to whether these two uh, protein prone or protein misfolding and aggregation prone proteins were related to each other. So in this poster, what we are um, showing is that in the case of a figure one, we are showing how this kinase um, that we've been working with for quite a long time is induced in Huntington's brains, in particular in the brains of a mouse model called CQ175, is induced progressively over time, as we can see in this graph. We have shown that CK2 alpha prime is connected to uh, pathways related to protein aggregation, protein misfolding, and chaperone expression. So we have seen that not only is it used in, this, in the brain of these mice, but it's also in use in, in post-mortem samples of patients with Huntington. So when we started looking at what are the effects of manipulating the levels of this kinase, and as a follow-up study of, of a previous um, paper that we published in Nature Communications back in 2017, we discover that manipulating the levels of CK2 alpha prime rescue the expression of several synaptic genes. Some of them, such as that PP32 and PSD95, are critical in, in modulating the excitatory synaptic activity of these mice. Here we're just showing cured PPCR and immunofluorescence for PSD95, indicating the improvement in the expression of some of these genes when we manipulate CK2 alpha prime in this mice. Now, if we move to figure number three, what we can see is that if now we do electrophysiology and we determine the uh, synaptic function in the brains of this animal, in particular in the striatum, which is this region that is degenerated preferentially in Huntington's, we see that the frequency of the miniature excitatory postsynaptic which is an indicator of vesicular release and synaptic function is significantly depleted in, this, in the brains of HD mice, this CQ175, but it is rescued in the double mutant when we remove CK2 off the prime from this mice. So this is very um, interesting because it's showing that just by manipulating 50% of the expression of this uh, gene, it causes a significant increase in excitatory synaptic function, which drives the function of the striatum and therefore it will be controlling many of the symptoms that we see in Huntington's. So we started um, looking into RNA-seq and transcriptomic analysis to determine why genes that are uh, related to synaptic functions would rescue in CK2 alpha prime heterozygous mice. And in a long story short, that I'll be happy to walk you through um, if you visit my poster during our meeting, uh, we found that many of the genes that were differentially expressed between Huntington's mice and Huntington's mice lacking CK2 alpha prime were related to synaptic functions. And many of them were connected somehow to alpha synuclein. We found alpha synuclein during IPA analysis of our RNA-seq data, which are really high um, p-value. So demonstrating that alpha synuclein has a strong potential for being regulated many of these genes that have synaptic function. So this um, brought us into investigating 
what was the connection between alpha-synuclein, Huntington's, and CK2 at the time? So if we move to figure number five, what we found is that indeed alpha-synuclein is highly phosphorylated in the brains of HD mice, as we can see by immunofluorescence here. And this phosphorylation has been linked to alpha-synuclein toxicity. So in Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and synucleinopathies in general, we find phosphoserine 129 as a marker for synucleinopathy and synuclein toxicity. We do see the same in, in Huntington's disease mice. And this was significantly depleted when we removed CK2 of the time. So in the literature, we found that CK2 indeed has the, the um, ability to phosphorylate these recipes. So what we think is happening is that the activation of CK2 alpha prime in HD mice is driving phosphorylation of alpha synuclein. But how is this relevant to the story that I'm telling? Well, this moves uh, or brings us to the last figure of our paper in which we found that this specific phosphorylation makes alpha synuclein mislocalized into the nerve. Obviously, nucleine is a cytoplasmic protein. And now, because it's phosphorylated, it has these toxic properties. It's now found in the nucleus, which is represented with this circle here and the blue dots for um, DAPI, which sustains nuclei. And then we can find it here in the nucleus, co-localizing with Huntington aggregates, which are a hallmark for Huntington. So all this data led us to hypothesize that this mislocalization of alpha synuclein in the nucleus is messing up with the transcriptional machinery, in particular with the specific factors that regulate synaptic proteins and synaptic genes. And therefore, accumulation of CK2 alpha prime is connected to this accumulation of phosphoalpha synuclein and synaptic dysfunction. And this is why when we remove or reduce the levels of CK2 alpha prime, we see an impact in rescuing specific ex uh, expression of synaptic genes as well as synaptic function. This is all I have for you right now. Um, I'll be happy to walk you through the entire poster and explain more about our most recent work here. And um, I'm very excited to meet you at our meeting on the 16th. Thanks for visiting my poster. Bye.